you know, the Western monotheisms um, have uh, replaced some of the older and uh, older religion. Uh, but then there's you know, there's a level where it's all non-theism. There's no, there's no real um, deity operating. The deity is kind of a relative level. And then there's this the unconditioned mind, which I, I think is underneath um, the th- all the theism. And that's that's ultimately the goal that I think uh, we all uh, really have, whether we recognize it or not, is to get under the under that that belt of theism and get into just the unconditioned, pure being that's underneath everything. Tell us a little, a little bit about uh, the Tarot of the Nine Paths. Uh, it's a it's a deck of, of uh, 30 cards only, is that right? Yeah. It's the Major Arcana. The deck is exclusive. I, I think of it as post-Tarot, if you will, in that um, it is just a Major Arcana but if the whole deck was created based on my uh, my thesis that the uh, major arcana of the tarot over the last 600 years has been uh, perfect in in its in, in its own self, but unfinished, um, short five cards, and if there's a way of looking at the infrastructure of of the trump cards, the big cards of tarot, laying them out and deciphering a code of, of meaning in between the cards that really, I think, suggests that somehow the, the deck stopped on the third row, um, and five new cards really needed to emerge to create a symmetry of the uh, of the body of, of information we call the major arcana of tarot. Those are the trump cards. So this deck is the, the, has moved the major arcana from 22 to 27 cards, it's added five, all correlated astrologically and kabbalistically and, and numerologically in ways that we're careful not to upset the existent tarot, because I'm very respectful of that. Mm-hmm. But it kind of has brought it into the 21st century, I, and at least that's what I, I believe. And um, then there are three more cards in addition to the what I call the matrix of, of the Tarot of Nine Paths. Um, one is a card which is called um, um, the Quaternity, which is the entire minor arcana in one card. Mm-hmm. And uh, so pure Tarotists will, will not, um, well, at first wince a little bit because the minor arcana, which is the suit card, you know, mm-hmm. um, are important and beautiful tradition in their tarot. They're not in this deck, um, and there's a whole discussion about, as to why. Um, even though I, you know, I, I've been teaching the tarot for 20 years or so, so I'm a big, I'm a big fan of the minor arcana ordinarily. But in this deck, TMT, it's just the majors, and then there's these two other cards, um, and the other uh, card is called um, the Traveler which is really a symbol of the, it's really who we are as kind of ordinary people with, um, who are living in this postmodern world trying to figure it out, trying to figure out how, you know, how we can deal with the, with the historical reality of being in, in Europe or America or whatever and being in our lives and our jobs and families, et cetera. And, Having a deep, you know, a deep sense that there's a also a spiritual strata or a spiritual um, mandate in our psyches to develop our consciousness. So that card, the Traveler, uh, really symbolizes we as ordinary human beings about to step on the path of the of, of you know, the Tower of the Nine Paths. Mm. So that's what that deck is about. Interesting. Um, and uh, like I said, the cards were, it took me about a number of years, were each done in a sand play scene uh, that uh, was in kind of an abstract way, carried my um, sense of the meaning of that particular card. Hmm. So that's what that is. Interesting. Um, what, what would you say 
I mean, in regards to that, the, the, the time that we're living in, if we talk a little bit more about this traveler, I, I think a lot of people uh, listening to this program and so forth can kind of identify with that in, in, in regards to kind of seeking a spiritual path or, or trying to figure out kind of in a way where we're going. Uh, what do you consider to be some of the, this is a big question, of course, but some of the problems that we're facing right now and, and how, how, how can we deal with them or how do we better, I guess, in one sense, overcome these problems? That's a great question. Um, well, I, where I would start with is um, the conditioned mind and uh, the way our um, our thinking processes, our you know, almost you could say our human neurosis, <laughs> um, and the culture that it's created um, has conditioned reality with uh, to look very much the way it does. Where where we're we've kind of whether we're born into this this realm that's based on, you know, hatred, greed, and delusion, as, as the Buddha taught, the three poisons, and you know, it's it's it rests on this kind of consumerist, uh, capitalist, or alternative to capitalist kind of economic world, and. The, really, the individual is a pretty new entity. I mean, I think that only in the last, I don't know, the modern period, maybe in the last several hundred years, has there been much time for uh, an individual psyche to stop and um, make choices about how they want to live their lives because there's been such a, you know, such a push in survival for you know, in the whole human uh, history. Yeah, that's right. So now it's very exciting in that we're, we're, you know, we're both at a very dangerous and very uh, exciting age in the uh, history of of the human experiment. And so it's particularly um, hot and alive to, for people like that listen to, to this show, who are now living in this at this time and also have access to all of these great wisdom teachings and uh, uh, tools. Um, so it's it's a very fascinating time that we that we're here. Absolutely, and and to me it feels I totally agree with you. It feels like these last couple of hundred years, and and at least from the perspective of the Western world, I I personally really don't know how how it is in other countries. I've heard. Uh, Joseph Campbell, for instance, talk about these the main you know differences about the Eastern mindset and the Western mindset mindset, and that we here in the West have had this little piece of uh, what we can see as a kind of a glimmer of freedom, at least, where we or individuality, where we can choose uh, you know how we want to live our lives to a certain extent. Do you think that that we're in a time right now where this also is being threatened in one regard? I can see that this. The freedom that we have been given uh, is also what I see now taken away a little bit, and we're we're moving into a kind of a new feudalist system, if you know what I mean. What do you think? Well, yes, um, certainly, uh, it's you know I can definitely see that occurring, particularly from ch- uh, childhood uh, and coming into certain cultures where their minds are so conditioned in such a heavy-handed way from such an early age that there's no possibility that they can grow up to be individuals. That's a problem. Um, But, uh, you know, um, in uh, over this past Christmas, I was in uh, India, in New Delhi, teaching the tarot, actually. And uh, what, uh, what, uh, what occurred to me, it was really phenomenal because I uh, had a an all day seminar uh, and had oh maybe uh, 60 70 uh, students uh, who were very much um, similar to the types of students I might have in America or in in, in Europe mm-hmm. in terms of uh, a kind of a young professional educated bright uh, compassionate group of folk who were using the tarot cards, a Western thing, but they were Indian, and they had their own long-standing, deep tradition in spirituality. And what occurred to me was how, in some ways, there's not that much difference at all, and that there's 
is a there is a um, a universal 